Andreas Russo here in this video. This is uh, one of the video videos that I'm doing about parking charge notices. Parking charge notices is something that I now know quite well. Uh, it's not part of um, of the business, but making this videos because I've got a lot of knowledge on that and I can help you if you had a uh, back in charge notices if you think they are uh, they are unjust you don't need to pay them and you can do that legally this is what this video is all about so um, it's very very important to number one understand what they are from a legal point of view they are an invoice so in this park charge notices um, uh, what do you call it? First of all, yes, they are an invoice. You've got to understand to have a, a very clear distinction between parking charge notices and the um, fines that you get from the council for uh, parking on double yellow lines or yellow lines. In case of parking charge notices, they are not a fine. They are an invoice. So, in case of the the uh, when you park uh, illegally, so to speak, they are a fine. So they're completely two different legal things, two different uh, kettle of fish. But the, in the case of parking charge notices, they are simple invoices. It's like your, uh, know, your uncle is invoicing you for whatever work he's done. He says he's done on uh, your property and whatnot. Or it's just is a private company, a private entity trying to bill you. That's all it is. The principle, legal principle of parking charge notices stands, however, um, they're very hard to enforce because the only way you can enforce them is through a court order, there's no any other way. And like any invoice, once the, um, if you fight um, a, a court claim, <clears throat> it's very hard to get, you know, is, is, is very hard, especially because these are small claims. So, um, they, whoever tries to enforce um, a small invoice on somebody will never going to be able to get loads of legal expenses back. So, small claims are not worthwhile uh, usually to, to, to fight in court if the other person who's uh, been sued disputes it. So that's, that's very important to understand. Now, what happens in practice is that um, parking charge notices are issued by those uh, management companies of um, pieces of private land that do not have any barriers. They may have or may not have some notices there, um, giving you the, the, the supposed, uh, supposed terms and conditions. And you... And they're not always visible. Um, not all, not everyone sees them. Um, not everyone notices them. So there are many difficulties there uh, for enforcement. Legal difficulties for enforcement. I'll give you an example, which you can find in the link below. Is the uh, NCP tried to uh, claim ah uh, almost three hundred pound of me for non-paying a uh, parking charge notice for dropping somebody off in, I think it was Gatwick or Ether, I can't remember. But it was, uh, it was insane. Uh, they were asking for too much money, so I fought it and won, by the way. So you can understand how I won by uh, clicking the, the link below. But again, going forth about the sparking charge notices, understand that they, um, they do not have this appeal uh, when you get a parking charge notice, they, you find that in the letter they say that you've got 21 days or whatever amount of time to appeal, send your appeal and whatnot. This is a deceit. It's like um, your plumber sending you an invoice and saying, well, if you're not, if you don't agree to it, appeal to me. It's just complete nonsense from a legal standpoint of view. It's complete nonsense. From a legal point of view, this appeal don't stand anything. They're just... Uh, they're a smoke screen, and then whenever you appeal to these uh, private companies, they always say that you still owe, owe them money anyway. So it's a private company. The only way to enforce it, and the appeal process means absolutely no nothing from a legal point of view. Now, 
So the only way they can claim any money is through a court order, if they obtained a court order. So the way they do it in practice is that when you don't pay the supposed parking charge notices, uh, they pass it on, they, they increase the charges, they pass it on to some debt collector um, agencies who specialize in the sort of things. And then I've, I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion that if you don't reply to these debt collectors, which actually give you complete false information, they're very deceiving, it's not as complete, it's smoke, smoke screen, don't believe whatever they write, because you don't know any money until they've, you've got, they've got a court order, which is very hard to enforce. So you do not own any money. You're not a debtor. They're not a creditor until they get a court order. Well, they could be um, a creditor if you applied for credit, but they're not, unless you applied for credit with a bank. So, but they're not a bank. They didn't, they didn't give you any loan or anything. So it's just an invoice. The only way they've got to enforce it is through a court order. So the only way they can enforce it is taking it to court, to a county court in the UK. Now, once the um, um, they have to pay thirty-five pound for to file a small claim court, uh, uh, case on you, and the usually um, they don't, especially if you respond to them, because if you respond to them and you try and you challenge it. They realize that you're somebody who fights and they know by big numbers who somebody who fight if they claim a uh, do a court claim then you're gonna fight back and then very it's gonna be very hard for them to win anything so the way you fight it is if you think it's unfair um, if you think it's unfair you, even if you think it's fair you can still fight it but I don't think uh, if you think is a there's a fair charge it's really fair you know um, if you think it's fair, you should pay. This is a moral a moral thing. But if you think it's not unfair, just don't pay. That's my advice. If you think it's... This is... Look, they're ripping me off. They're trying to, 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 to extort money from me. So I'm not paying. Great. Fair enough. You've got, you, you've got the right not to pay until they get a court order, which is very hard if you, um, if you, if you fight it. So how to fight these things? Basically, when they start writing... To you, you write back asking them to number one prove that you have seen that you have seen the contract when prove that it was you driving the car. Number one, it was you driving the car, <laughs> that's very important that it was you driving the car. Number uh, two, prove the state of um, that the, the car has been parked in, in that location, prove it using videos or whatever, ask for the proof that the car has been there part in that particular location for how long. Um, three, proof of contract. Um, prove that whoever drove the car has signed the contract, which they're not going to have. They're going to say there's a, there's a sign, that's it. Um, just these three things are quite are quite strong just if they say things because they do not usually have a, a very strong grounds on that so they, you'll find that they will not usually they reply with a standard uh, letter or if they will not reply at all they will completely ignore it so the good thing is if they ignore it, it's great as long as you keep um, uh, proof that they uh, they have ignored it um, you know you, you, you're in good uh, grounds, but whenever you write to them, and it's good that you do it in writing and you keep the, the reference, always offer to pay a fair amount should they prove the case to you. Because if then they take you to court, you can use that as a, a, as a defense, because then they ramp up the f charges to stupid amounts, which are completely legal. And again, if you want to know about why they're legal, just click the link below. And um, then you've got a strong defense, and that's it. Once you've got a strong defense, it's really, in practice, it's really hard to, fi to fight. So, but 
the only thing you have to be wary of. So I put it into two steps. When you get these uh, parking charge notices, if you want to appeal, you can. The appeal is worth, uh, it's worthless. Um, but at any stage, you just write an, uh, a letter asking for these three things. Proof who was the driver. Proof that, because you don't have to, if you're the, the, the vehicle owner, you don't have to prove anything. They've got It's up to them to prove who was driving, because it's who's driving that it should be... Um, should uh, be having to pay if they signed the contract or, or if this proof they had, they had seen the contract and they agreed to that. So they've got a contract problem, uh, which they're not going to be, it's quite hard to, um, to, um, to argue in court. And the proof that really is the, the car has been there for how long? They've got it with video evidence, as much evidence as possible. And then if you ask, if you said to that in that letter that you, if you, if they do that, yes, you're going to give them money, a fair amount, you know, something that's fair. You can name a, a figure, you can say £20, £10, whatever else, something that is fair and proportionate. Then if they take it to court, this is a very strong defence on its own. But you'll find that um, you'll find many grounds for defence uh, if you want to defend yourself even into more detail. And the very, very course, worst case scenario, which is not going to happen, um, then the judge would, uh, in the very worst case scenario, which is very, very unlikely, the judge would just grant a, a smaller amount than they're asking anyway. In the very worst case scenario, it's not going to happen. And I'm telling you why it's not going to happen because it's never going to go to court in practice. Because um, in order to go to court, they have to they have to spend money. It's not worth it's not worth it while. So that it, it's just always uh, if they take you to court, they they're always intimidating you. It's an intimidation tactic, hoping that you're going to pay something. Um, so if they take you to court, defend it. You can do a counter, def a counter, uh, a counter claim on them, and pretty much that's the uh, that's the end of it. As soon as this, the um, the court date is fixed, and if they don't pay, meaning the uh, credit uh, recovery agency don't pay for the court fees, the the case the case gets struck out, and that's pretty much it. Because then they've got to reapply for it. It's just a, a pain in the backside. So, in practice, if you do this, this three, this, um, this three steps. Actually, yeah, the step of writing a letter, asking for this evidence. They will never respond to that. Trust me, they will never respond to that, because they all they do is send standard letters. Then. Pretty much, you've got a strong line of defence, and that's really it. And then, if they take it to court, that's it. They were very like <laughs> they will never. The case will never go to court. Very likely, ninety nine out of a hundred. And even if it did, in that one percent of the case, you've got strong defence, and it's very unlike unlikely that they're gonna. The, the 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 judge is gonna charge you whatever they're asking for. It would it would ask you to pay. What, thirty pound, something, something very small, much smaller than they're asking for. So it's always good to fight it. Always fight it. As long as you fight it on time, you're fine. Because uh, what they're counting on, especially, is that they they file the county court case and you never see the, the the court papers, and then they win by default. If they win by default, you've got twenty eight days to 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 pay whatever they're asking for. Um, so. Make sure that if they take you to court, bam, you do, you do defend it as quickly as possible within the 14 days. Okay, so Andres Russo here, we, we hope that you find this useful. And we'll see you in the next video, which is, uh, <clears throat> which is um, about, which are all about other topics, okay.